All right, it's good to see you today. We're taking a look at the New York Jets for 2019. I'm really excited. I've never done a video about the Jets before. We've covered a lot of other teams in the NFL, but this is the first time ever covering New York. So welcome aboard. For those of you who are long-suffering Jets fans, I think for the first time in a long time, you've got some things that really give you some hope going forward. You have a youth quarterback. You have plenty of cap space. You've got plenty of cap flexibility. So I think there's a lot of things to be excited about. We're going to take a look at where you are as a franchise right now and where you may be heading during this offseason over the next few weeks. So I'm going to start with where you've come from. And where you've come from is not a good place. And for those of you who are Jets fans, you know what it's like to suffer long. It has been the history of this franchise, other than the Joe Namath Super Bowl, other than two AFC Championship game appearances by Rex Ryan, it has not been pretty when you look at the history of this franchise other than just a few bright spots here and there. So 4-12 and last season. Last season was a train wreck. When you looked at the talent on the roster last year, you, you really hope, man, at least maybe hopefully we can kind of flirt with 500 all season long. Maybe the ball bounces our way. Maybe Sam Darnold catches fire later in the season. Maybe we actually bump into a playoff spot. Maybe all of these things are possible. You started off that way at 3-3, three and three, and then the bottom just falls out. You lose 9 out of 10 games, and that leads to Adam Gase being your new head coach. So it wasn't pretty. It hasn't been pretty for a while. You've got two 5-11 and 11 seasons buttressing that. You've got a 10-6 season mixed in there, and then you've got 4-12 and 12 back before that as well. This is basically what the entire New York Jets franchise looks like, aside from a couple of bright spots. Now... What you do have with a young quarterback and with cap space, you do have plenty of hope for the future. And I know Jets fans have heard that forever and forever and for decades. You've got some hope coming in. We're getting better. But it's true again this year. You've got the cap space. You've got a guy in Sam Darnold who does at least give you some hope. How much cap space? You've got $102 million. That is a boatload of money to be playing with. You are flush with cash as you roll in to free agency this offseason. In truth, no NFL team needs that much cap space. Really, that much cap space is an indicator that you just don't have a whole lot of top-end talent on your team. And that's true of the New York Jets at this moment. They have some nice pieces, but they do not have a lot of top-end talent on that team other than a couple of players on the defensive side of the football. That being said, it sure does feel nice to go into the free agency market with $102 million. It's not the same as going into the NBA free agency market with a bunch of money. When you are an NBA team, you can grab the top two or three free agents in a given offseason and instantly transform from what is the laughing stock of the league to being a championship team over the night. You can't do that in the NFL. Even if you were, and you could, even if you were to go out and grab the top five free agents, whoever they are, whoever you wanted to get for your team, you wouldn't even necessarily guarantee yourself a playoff spot for next year, and you certainly wouldn't guarantee yourself Super Bowl contention over the next three to five seasons. So it's very different. You don't even need this much cap space, but since you have it, it feels good as long as you spend it wisely. You want to go into free agency this year you want to try to pick out a couple of good players, good younger players that you can build on for the next few seasons, guys that you feel really good about moving forward, guys who are talented, guys who are somewhat unique at their position. You don't want to overspend for them. You don't want to get into a bidding war for somebody. You don't want to set your heart on a player and get into a bidding war with two or three other teams for that particular player. His cap space just gets so large that you really can't build a winning football team around him. So you have to be careful with that. So you want to pick out a couple of players, good younger players like that, who are 25, 26 years old, and very good at their position. Try to get them a somewhat of a reasonable cap number. And then you want to use the rest of that money to try to bring in some mid-level free agents, try to plug up some of these holes. You will not, and no NFL team is, able, you will not be able to fill out every single roster spot during this offseason. No NFL team hardly ever can. What you do hope for in this offseason with this money and those draft picks, you hope to be able to fill out a lot of these holes and to, be, to, to really be building some, some blocks for the future. And next offseason, you hope to really catapult yourself up. So, yeah, if you wanted to, you could really make a playoff push based on these picks and, and this cap flex this, this offseason, and you'd like to do that, but that's not the number one concern. You really want to build together 
and try to put together something that for the next three to five seasons really works for you and just really, really keeps yourself strong. $102 million of cap space, 9.1 of that. 9.1 of that will go to your six draft picks. You've got the number three pick overall. I want to stop right there. I would love to see the Jets, whether they trade back or whether they stay at number three, I would love to see the Jets use that, that really high draft pick to get an edge rusher. I don't think that's the number one need of the offseason. I'll tell you what those needs are later. I don't think that's the number one need, but I do think that that top draft pick, whether you trade back with it or whether you stay right where you are, I think the best place to use that is at that edge rusher. And of course, Jets fans were hoping that would happen last offseason and the offseason before. It didn't happen, but I think now is the year. I think there's lots of good edge rushers out there this year in the draft. I don't think you can get that many in free agency, so I really think the draft is the place to use it. Even if you end up trading back, and I think the Jets could really use that depth on their roster, even if you end up trading back, I think you can still get a good edge rusher somewhere in the top 10 if that's how far you end up trading back. So those are your draft picks, $9.1 million of which will be used on those six draft picks. I want to take a look at some of the different positions on your team and give out grades for those positions. The grades are for this purpose. They are not to take a look at back at 2018 and tell you how good you did or didn't do. They are to let you know at that position whether or not you need to upgrade right now at that position or if you're kind of sufficient for this upcoming season at that spot. So we start with quarterback and we're looking at Sam Darnold and he wasn't great last year. Matter of fact, he wasn't even good. And in truth, he wasn't even average. He was at the lower end of the league when you look at all of his numbers. But he is young. It was his first season. He doesn't have a lot of weapons around him. He didn't have a great offensive line. So I think for what we saw, we saw some good things out of him. We saw that he could do some things. He does produce. I don't think I've seen enough to ever think that he'll be a top three quarterback or top five quarterback. But I think if you put pieces around him and mix in a good defense and mix in some good coaching and mix in some, some good production for him, I think you're going to see him at least move into the top half of the league as a quarterback and maybe even in two or three seasons move into the top ten as a quarterback. I think there's enough there that that could all happen, but you've got to put all that together. I think that's what you have in Sam Darnold. And maybe even for some of you, he might even turn into that top three or top five quarterback that, of course, every franchise hopes that they have. But I think that's what we've seen out of him so far, so I would grade him a C. There's certainly no need to try to get another quarterback right now. You're going to give him the next season or even the next two seasons to see what he can do. His offensive line is a very different story. They were bad last year. They weren't the worst offensive line of football, but they were in the lower five offensive lines of the league last year. They were really bad. They didn't do a particularly great job of covering Darnold. They didn't do a great job of run blocking. They didn't do a great job of anything. The offensive line does not need a massive overhaul. What it does need, and this is true of all, almost all the Jets roster, it needs some top-end talent. Kelvin Beecham at left tackle is somewhat decent and average, but he's not really going to hold down that spot for you. When you look at Winters at guard, or Shell, or Harrison, or whoever you want to look at on the offensive line, what you have is a lot of contributors. What you have are guys that you feel really good at that number three talent spot, or the fourth most talented spot. You do not feel good about them being your top two offensive linemen. So what you really need this offseason, and this would be a great place to spend some of that money, you really need to find somebody, one or two guys, who can really step up and be a talent on the offensive line. And that takes the guys that you have right now, bumps them down in terms of what you expect out of them, and they can really contribute and be building blocks off of that foundation that you've got, hopefully in free agency, somebody that you can get on the offensive line. I would also like to see the Jets take one of those two, uh, two third-round draft picks and use that on the offensive line as well. I think that would really be a great way to start infusing some talent into that offensive line. These players are not terrible. They're just being asked to do more than they're really capable of doing at this point in their careers as veterans, or maybe some of them have just peaked out altogether as journeymen. So the offensive line, I, I didn't give them an F because I do think there are some usable parts there. You just need some top-end talent, either as a third-round draft pick or getting somebody out of free agency. I'm just going to hit running back very quickly. Running back is not the most important spot in the NFL, but you do like to have somebody there that can do something. 
You've got Isaiah Kroll there. He's average. I don't know that you're ever going to get much more out of him than that. You don't have much depth at running back. It's not horrible. I don't think your running back spot is horrible. But I do think that you could use an upgrade there as well. So maybe some of those later round draft picks, a fourth or a fifth round draft pick would be a great spot here to try to upgrade on that running back position if you can. But if you can't, it is not by any stretch the most important position to worry about during this upcoming offseason. I'd much rather you see you upgrade that offensive line and the wide receiver spot. I've split up the wide receiver spot into two categories, that being wide receiver and tight end. So for tight ends, I gave them a B. I really like Chris Herndon. I think he's easily one of the better tight ends of football. He's not one of the top five tight ends in football by any stretch, but what we've seen out of him so far is he's a real weapon. He's somebody that Sam Darnold can go to, somebody that Sam Darnold can throw to and rely on, and I think we haven't seen the best out of Chris Herndon yet. I think you're going to see a lot better out of him than what we've seen so far. So I don't think you have to worry about tight end at all. You have Jordan Leggett back there, who is really much more of an athletic offensive lineman at this point in his NFL career. I would like to see Jordan Leggett develop as a target for Sam Darnold, but we haven't seen that yet. We know he can run block and pass block, so he's almost like a sixth, sixth offensive lineman when he's on the football field. He's very good at that, but I would really like to see Jordan Leggett develop as a target, but you still have Chris Herndon there, so I gave the tight ends a B. You've got a couple of young guys there who I think you're really comfortable with for the next couple of seasons, and maybe even much farther than that, depending on how Chris Herndon continues to develop and whether or not you can re-sign him in a couple of years. Now I would like to see the Jets go out and somehow somewhere, whether it's lower down in the in the draft or maybe it's just a really cheap free agent, uh, a veteran of some sort, get somebody who for the next couple of seasons can kind of be that second tight end, take some of the pressure off of Leggett and Herndon and just, just kind of pick up 30 catches a year, just kind of another tool in the toolbox for Sam Darnold to kind of go to just add a little bit more catching ability there at the tight end spot until Jordan Leggett can develop or until you figure out that he's not going to. So I would like to see that at the tight end spot. Wide receiver. Some of you are in love with Quincy and Nunwa and Robbie Anderson, and some of you are not. Adam Gase came out the other day and said that he liked both of those players. I like both of those players, but you'll notice I gave wide receiver a D. I'll say the same thing about wide receiver that I said about offensive line and that I've said about the entire New York Jets roster. I think you have a couple of guys in Robbie Anderson and Quincy Anunwa who are nice pieces. I think they can contribute. I think they have value. I really love Anunwa. He's a tough guy. He knows how to block as a wide receiver. He doesn't mind going over the middle. He has some talent for route running. He has some talent for catching the football. So I like him as a player. He's a nice player. I do not want him being my number one receiver. Robbie Anderson has, has a different skill set. I think he's faster. I think he can catch the ball. I think he offers you more of a deep threat. Neither one of these guys has been able to stay on the field and be very healthy. Therefore, we really haven't seen the best that these two guys have to offer, and you have to wonder, are we ever going to see it? So I would be much more happy if these two players were my number two and three receivers or my number three and four receivers versus being my number one and two options. If I'm the New York Jets, and you're probably not going to be able to do it in the draft, but I think you probably could do it in free agency. Go out and get a wide receiver who's really a top-end guy. Let me address Antonio Brown. By the time some of you see this video, Antonio Brown may already be traded. But if I were the New York Jets, I wouldn't trade for Antonio Brown for any number of reasons. Number one, I don't want to give up whatever draft picks I've got to give up in order to get Antonio Brown. Number two, Antonio Brown is 31 years old. I think... I don't know at what point we're going to start seeing regression, but I think we've seen the best from Antonio Brown that we're ever going to see. He's an amazing athlete. He's an amazing talent. But I just don't think that I want to trade for that at that high cap number that he is. He's going to be $20 million for the next couple of seasons. I don't want to trade for Antonio Brown on this team, even knowing that he's an incredible weapon, even knowing that he brings a lot of talent. I just don't want to give up the assets and the cap space in order to get Antonio Brown. Also, one final reason I wouldn't want Antonio Brown, we've seen how well 
how much trouble he's had on the Pittsburgh Steelers roster. Now, I certainly wouldn't blame Antonio Brown for all of the Steelers' woes, or even most of the Steelers' woes. I think Mike Tomlin can have some blame there. I think that Ben Roethlisberger can get a ton of the blame there. I think Antonio Brown can catch some of the blame. But to say the least, Antonio Brown has been part of the drama there in Pittsburgh. We saw Adam Gase down in Miami have trouble getting along with certain players down in Miami and basically shipping them out. So when I look at the New York Jets and the media market that they're in and how Antonio Brown has had issues and how Adam Gase has had issues, I don't think that's a good mix at all. So if I'm the New York Jets, and this might be resolved by the time you see the video anyway, if I'm the New York Jets, there's no way I'm trading for Antonio Brown, even knowing what an incredible and great player he is, not just for the drama issues between him and potentially Gase, but because of the age and because of the cap number, and because I don't want to give up any of my draft picks this season or next season in order to get Antonio Brown on the team. So, having said that, I do think you can upgrade a lot there at the wide receiver spot, and you really would like to have a top-end talent come in, and that would really allow a Nunwa and Anderson, if they're healthy and if they can develop, that would really allow them to be much more comfortable in their roles as a number two and a number three receiver there for the New York Jets. So that covers the offense. I want to slide over and cover the defense. The defense last year was really bad, surprisingly bad, considering that Todd Bowles was a defensive mind and considering that you actually had some pretty good pieces there on defense and you're actually paying some pretty good bit of money to some players on defense. Yet the defense was consistently, all season long, the defense was consistently not just in the lower third of the league, but really in the lower five teams of the league, just all season long, they were bad. It was a tremendously bad defense all season long. But I want to break it down and look at the position group, starting with the edge rusher. I already alluded to this. Edge rusher has been horrible for a couple of seasons now for the New York Jets. They have nobody who on the edge can get pressure on the quarterback, and I mean nobody. And Jets fans have been begging for an edge rusher for quite a while now. I think this is the offseason to address it. I think the depth is there in the draft. But you get an F when it comes to edge rushers. From the outside linebacker position to the defensive end position, there is just nobody who can consistently get pressure on the quarterback from those edge positions. And you're seeing that, and I think that puts a ton of pressure on the secondary. And it just really, it really kind of makes the defense break down because you don't have anybody who can get pressure on the quarterback. I'm not saying anything that uh, people don't already know, but that's just stating the obvious here. Edge rusher gets an F. You move over to the defensive interior. I've actually given them a B. I actually like, and even though they were not good against the run last year as a whole defense, you have some good pieces there. At defensive interior, you have, of course, Mike Pinnell, and you have Steve McClendon, and you have Leonard Williams, and you have Anderson. You have their four guys who are very solid. It is one of the best rotations on the defensive interior line that there is in football. Now, the, the problem is that aside from Pinnell, none of these guys is a breakout star. None of these guys really gets a lot of consistent pressure on the quarterback either. But, man, what a solid group. Pinnell's the guy that you really like going forward. You hope you can build on him and continue to see him develop maybe even into a star. He's not a star yet. Right now he's a stud. He's a very good player. You would love to see Pinnell really develop into a star. But the four players that you have on the defensive interior really form quite a rotation. Uh, very much a strength there. Very much a lot of guys who can just kind of come in and keep everybody fresh all throughout the game. Even if you're having to be on the field for a lot of snaps, you've got that there at the defensive interior position. When you look at linebacker, I see the same thing. The NFL has changed a lot over the years. In, uh, the linebacker spot is one spot that has changed. You don't typically, throughout a game, throughout a season, you don't have to have three and four linebackers on the field as much as you used to need to do. So even if you talk about a guy being a 4-3 guy, or he's a 3-4 coach, or this is his base defense, or this is his philosophy, that's all true. But what you see these days a lot more often than ever before is two linebackers on the field and what really is five uh, defensive backs on the field with the four down linemen being the most frequent that you see. So for the, for the New York Jets at linebacker, they've got Avery Williamson, they've got Darren Lee, who I like as well. Now Avery Williamson is much more your classic linebacker who at least at times can, can get up on the run and at times can get pressure on the quarterback. 
Uh, Darren Lee is very much the opposite. He's your coverage guy. Lee is the guy who's going to stand back there and cover the tight ends and cover the running back and do a much better job of that. So they're two vastly different players. I like both of them. Of course, Williamson looks to be the best of the two, but at linebacker, based on those two players right there, Lee and Williamson, I've given them a B. I think those are guys right there at the defensive interior and at the linebacker spot that you can really build on. I don't see uh, game-changing talent there. I don't think you have any Hall of Famers there at those spots, but really I think you have some very nice players there to build on at those two particular spots. Covering the secondary, and this will be the last of the grades, uh, in, in the free safety spot, I'm giving you an A on that. That is based on May, but primarily that is based on Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams is a star in the making at that safety position. He's an all-pro in the making at that position. You have really hit in the draft. No place in the draft have you hit better than you hit at May and Adams at safety. So you get an A there. No reason to try to improve there. The cornerback position is terrible, and that's unfortunate because you've given Tremaine Johnson a lot of money. You've even traded for Tremaine Johnson from the Rams during the past offseason. So you would really like to see more out of Tremaine Johnson in the upcoming couple of seasons because you're kind of tied to him because of the money that he's making. But what you would really like to see, as well as Tremaine Johnson develop, you would love to see the Jets go out maybe in free agency. So if, if I'm game planning, if I'm putting together a map of the offseason for the Jets, this cap space, I would love to see them use it on a wide receiver, uh, an offensive line, and the secondary. And then to cover this major hole at edge rushing, I would love to see them use a draft pick, their top draft pick on that spot as well. Whether they trade back from number three or stay up there, that's how I'm going to address those four major holes. So for me, the most important need of the offseason, listen, edge rusher is your weakest spot. But what you don't want to do in two seasons from now is have Sam Darnold be underdeveloped and his progression really hindered and you wonder, is it because we didn't give him a good enough offensive line? Or is it because we didn't surround him with enough weapons? So for me, the number one need this offseason is wide receiver and offensive line. Even if you can't get a top-end wide receiver, if you can get a good slot receiver, if you can get a second tight end, something, you need a couple more weapons there, just more weapons for him to throw the ball to, more guys that he feels safe about being open and throwing the ball to, and then you need a better offensive line. You need to add a couple of pieces there so he feels safer. And listen, Sam Darnold didn't get sacked a whole lot last offseason. He was kind of in the middle of the league of getting sacked, but there's no doubt that, that hindered him the offensive line hindered him from being able to throw the ball as much as he wanted to. He's, he would have to go to his check downs a lot more than he was comfortable doing but because of that. So those are your four major needs. The cornerback spot I would put as the fourth most important. So I would start at the offensive line. I would continue right here at the wide receiver or skill set positions. Then I would go to the edge rusher and I would cover the secondary last. Now, your cap hits and your dead money, you are in a very unique spot. Not only do you have $102 million for cap space, but if you want to spend more money this offseason, you can. Most NFL teams, if they have a lot of cap space, do not have much wiggle room here with their contracts. Other NFL teams, if they have a lot of wiggle room with their contracts, don't have a lot of cap space. The New York Jets actually have both. Not only do you have this $100 million to spend, You've actually got several guys on the team. And by the way, this is your top seven money makers on the team right now. These are your top seven cap hits for the New York Jets. Several of these guys, if you wanted to let them go right now, either in a trade or just flat out cut them, you could actually have more money to spend if you wanted to. I doubt you're going to need to do that. I don't think there's any need to try to change over this much of your roster in a single offseason, but it's there if you decide to do that. Leonard Williams, he's a $14.2 million cap hit this offseason, but you could release him for no dead cap hit. Uh, same thing here for Kelvin Beecham. I don't think you're going to want to let him go. I think you'd rather keep him for now. He has a $9.5 million cap hit. If you wanted to, you could save $8 million in cap space right now, either by trading him or letting him go. I don't think there's anything to do that. Avery Williamson, you're going to keep. Darnold, you're going to keep. Winters, if you wanted to. This would be an option if you just decided, man, there's somebody else out there in free agency we want to go after. You could let go of Winters for $6.5 million, 
save that $6.5 million for something else. Uh, same thing with Jamal Adams. He's tied up right now. So there's wiggle room here that a lot of NFL teams would love to have that the Jets have in addition to the cap space. So that's what the Jets have looking forward. That's the offseason plan that I would go with as we're looking at what they have. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Goodbye.